Thanks for it, does, I swear. By Sarah1281. Chapter 4. Sakura. Sakura wasn't even really sure she wanted to go back in the first place. Sure, there had been some rough spots in her life. Notably, the period when Sasuke was in Oto, Naruto was traveling with Jiraiya, and Kakashi was AWOL. But for the most part, things had worked out in the end. The odds of Sasuke actually coming back after everything were astronomical enough as it was, but combined with Tsunade recovering, Konoha enduring, and Naruto surviving, it was a miracle, plain and simple, and she didn't want to go back and try to fix things and inadvertently screw anything up. Just the same, Kakashi, Naruto, and... To a lesser extent, Sasuke seemed so dead set on the idea that she couldn't help but go along with it. After all, all three of them were going to disappear from her world, and there was no way that she'd be left behind again! Her life before graduating from the academy had only been remarkable in its simplicity. In a group where chakra deformations, demon possessions, seal enslavements, clan pressures, family massacres, and revenge-seeking were the norm, her mundane life with her family and friends made her a bit of an oddity. After all, she'd been willing to throw away her best friend once over a silly little crush on a barely pubescent boy. Thankfully, she'd realized just how stupid that was and... Well, she'd need to fix that immediately. If she were going to go back at all, reliving her days of being bullied was really kind of pointless. She wouldn't really have a lot of chakra if she went back before becoming Tsunade's apprentice, and she'd need to do some serious training to get her daijutsu back up to her usual levels. But Sasuke, Naruto, and Kakashi had all moved on by the time she had sought out the Godame. So going back to then would be like not bothering to go back at all. Sakura still didn't understand what exactly had gone down as far as the massacre was concerned and doubted that anyone would ever really know the true story as Itachi had died. Danzo and the council claimed ignorance and Madara was practically a pathological liar. She couldn't do anything there. All of Kakashi's issues seemed to stem from back before she was even born and he would have no reason to be interested in her even if there was something there. Naruto... Naruto had been neglected his whole life, but he'd managed to cope well enough that waiting until she graduated wouldn't really do any harm. Sakura woke up early the day after the graduation exam, and when she absently ran her fingers through her tangled hair, she was surprised at how long it was. She let a smile cross her face as she remembered Ino telling everyone that sasuke only liked girls with long hair right after she decided to grow hers out. Sakura, like everyone else, had believed her, which was funny looking back on it because as far as she knew Sasuke's two biggest requirements for a girl he could potentially be interested in were not being useless or fangirl. Which at the time among the girls they knew basically meant Tenzin. Of course Sasuke barely knew her and she was obviously going to end up with Neji so it's not like that would have worked out even if Sasuke hadn't up and left. Sakura searched around her room until she found a kunai half hidden under her bed. Just like before, she was a Kunuichi reborn and wanted to look the part. She went to the bathroom and holding her hair above the trash can, mimicked her initial change from a rather sheltered little girl to a determined ninja in training. After evening out the ends of it, she eyed her reflection. Not bad. She looked a lot more like she remembered now, even if she was younger. Longer hair had always symbolized her fangirl days to her, and she was glad to be rid of it. Unfortunately, her wardrobe left much to be desired, as the long dresses she had worn for most of her time as a Ganin really weren't the most practical for the life of a shinobi. Still, it was only the day of the initial team meeting, and as the survival training would be the day after, she figured it would be fine if she went and bought some shorts after she was dismissed for the day. Sakura's mother stared at her when she went down to the kitchen. What's for breakfast? She asked brightly. I'm starving. I thought you were on a diet, her dad asked without looking up from his meal. I was, Sakura admitted, feeling a little embarrassed at her childhood silliness. But then I realized that I'm going to need energy if I'm going to be a Konoichi, and all the exercise I'm sure to get will more than burn off any unwanted calories. What happened to your hair, Sakura? Her mother asked as she placed her breakfast in front of her. I got it, Sakura said simply. It seemed kind of obvious. I can see that, but why? Her mother pressed. Sakura shrugged. Well, today I meet my Ganin team and start my life as a Kanoichi. I might as well at least try and act the part. Having my hair down is just begging someone to try and immobilize me by grabbing it. So I figured I could either cut it or wear my hair in a ponytail and look like I'm copying Eno. And that's just not going to happen. Sakura's father glanced up at her. 
It looks nice, he said approvingly. I'm glad you've decided to take being a ninja more seriously. It's a very dangerous line of work, after all, and we don't want you to get hurt. As Sakura's parents were civilians, they really had no idea just how dangerous it could be, and if Sakura had it her way, they never would. Last time, it had taken Payne's total annihilation of Kanaha before they had had ideas of the kinds of things she had routinely gone up against. Don't worry, she assured them. I'm sure our instructor will be more than capable, even if he was lazy. And a pervert. And she never really did understand why he wore a mask all the time. Granted, she was so used to seeing him with it that when she had seen him without it, it had freaked her out. But she'd seen his Ganeen picture, and he'd been wearing one then, so what had they started? And why? I will need to go shopping when I get back to get some shorts and things to wear that won't get in the way. But you look so cute in that dress, her mother protested. Sakura rolled her eyes. I'm sure I can look cute in more practical clothing, Mom. And even if I don't, I'm not there to be at candy. Not this time. Sakura was hurrying towards the academy deep in thought when she crashed into someone. I'm sorry, she said automatically. Don't worry about it. Itachi assured her with a smile. It was an accident. Wait. What? Itachi! Sakura shrieked. Yes, do I know you? He asked, tilting his head quizzically. I... What? How? Why are you here? Sakura demanded, not answering the question. Fortunately, he was not wearing his usual Agatsuki cloak. Or she probably would have passed out from shock. It was close, though. I am escorting Kakashi to the academy, as Anko and Obito are both on a mission. And if left to his own devices, Kakashi would show up sometime this afternoon. Itachi explained. Sakura managed to tear her eyes from Itachi's. They were black, not showing on red, which was another surprise. And saw that not only was Kakashi standing behind Itachi, but Sasuke and Naruto were too. All three members of her future team were looking at her curiously. Anko? My fiance, Kagashi explained. You're getting married? Okay, now that was almost stranger than Itachi's presence. Right after the Junin exams, Kagashi confirmed. Hey, Sakura chan, Naruto said suddenly. Do you think Shikamaru is more likely to end up with Tamari or Ino? Tamari, for sure, Sakura replied automatically. She's in kind of hot far too often for it to just be diplomatic. And besides, I think Ino's got a thing for Sai. Suddenly, she realized where she was, or rather, when, and stammered at, I mean, welcome to the party, Kakashi greeted her, looking like he was smiling behind his mask. Sasuke, you are Naruto, and I, 500 Rio each. Oh uh, no, Sasuke grumbled, reaching into his pocket and pulling out the stated sum before shoving it towards the winners of whatever little bet they had going. <sighs> Did she have to be so predictable? You're the one who bet against it, Kakashi pointed out. Well, I thought any day but today was pretty good odds, Sasuke said defensively. Maybe if you hadn't run off the girl be a moron, then you'd know Sakura chan better. Naruto told them. What is going on? Sakura asked, feeling more confused by the second. Don't worry, Itachi assured her, or tried to. Seeing as how he was supposed to be a missing nin, it wasn't very reassuring. Granted, he apparently was never actually evil, but it was still unsettling. They get like that a lot. It's like they're in their own little world. We'll explain it to Nino, Sakura chan, Naruto promised, frowning slightly, but knowing that she'd get the chance to interrogate them soon enough, Sakura followed them into the building. Iruka was standing in front of the class, trying to get them to quiet down, which was no easy feat considering they were all so excited to have finally passed. Well, kind of passed. Okay, so everyone's here except. Oh dear, Kami, what are you doing here, Kakashi? he demanded. Kakashi raised his eyebrows, and wait, was that two eyes he had? What had happened to his Sharingan? What in the world was going on here? Since when did Sasuke and Naruto act like they were friends and even know Kakashi at all? Had she accidentally entered an alternate dimension? I'm supposed to test a team today. You should probably know that, Iruka, seeing as you were part of the team that assigned me. Assigned you? Iruka started. You demanded your team. I wouldn't think no for an answer. Let's not quibble over semantics, Kakashi said airily. And I was referring to the fact that you're only five minutes late, Iruka said, still looking shocked at this fact. Sakura looked up at the clock. It was true. Wow. Seeing 
that's how Kakashi always used to joke about how the only reason he'd lived as long as he had was because he'd kept arriving late for death, and so it got tired of waiting for him and just left. This really was quite remarkable. I don't know what you're talking about, Kakashi lied. I confiscated his books and threatened to give them to Agho if he didn't show up. Itachi explained, You're a miracle worker, Itachi. Iruka said, shaking his head in amazement. Sakura was also amazed. Why in the world weren't people freaking out or at least slightly surprised to see Itachi here? I have to go. Itachi said, poking his brother in the forehead. Be good, it don't fail. Yeah, yeah. Sasuke grumbled, rubbing his forehead. Sakura watched teams 1 through 6 get assigned. The Jonin, she noted, appeared to be simply going through the motions. None of the kids were from any ninja clans, and she didn't remember ever seeing any of them among the ranks of the Kanahashinobi. Clearly, they weren't expected to be one of the three teams that passed. Teams 10 and 8, however, were entirely made up of representatives of strong shinobi clans, and the recreating of the Inoshika Cho team was a little suspect. Sasuke and she represented the best in the class and the best Kunoichi, so that probably wasn't coincidental either. Wow, that was kind of brutal, huh? All those kids wasting years in the academy, and they never even get a chance to really graduate unless there was a lack of clan kids in a class. Team 7 will be Haruno Sakura, Ujiha Sasuke, and Namikaze Naruto, and it will be led by Hataki Kakashi. Iruka announced, causing Sakura to narrow her eyes in confusion once more. Namikaze? Naruto? Sure, the truth of Naruto's parentage had eventually come out, but that was years in the future. Why was this common knowledge now? If she ever saw her Kakashi again, she was going to kill him for giving her a faulty jutsu. Sure, she'd ended up in the past, but she'd meant to go back to her past, not an alternate universes. Well, let's begin by introducing ourselves, Kakashi suggested once they'd reached their meeting spot. We all know who we are already, but it wouldn't do to start the team off on the wrong foot this time, now would it? Let's go with likes, dislikes, dreams for the futures, and what you changed when you went back in time. Went back in time, Sagara repeated blankly. Then it clicked. We ended up in the same timeline? And I'm the last to come back? And that's why nothing makes any sense? It's your own fault for choosing not to come back until the last possible moment, Sasuke told her bluntly. If it weren't for the fact you all were apparently changing things every time you turned around, there would have been no need to go back further. Sakura defended herself. Don't worry, Sakura-chan! Naruto grinned at her. In a few weeks, your memories of this time will come back in. I don't think things should be that different with you, as our changes only really affected you peripherally. Oh, it did make Sasuke declare that he could never be with anyone who would throw away their friends over him, so you and Inu are still speaking. But really, that's probably the biggest difference to you personally. You did what? Sakura couldn't help but smile. Thank you. I was wondering how I could fix that. Well, that and the fact that since I already knew everything and Sasuke is just as competitive as I am, we're tied for best in the class, and the only reason we managed to avoid graduating early is by failing you to show up to take the final exam a few times, Naruto said, almost as an afterthought. That's why Kakashi had to fight so hard to get the three of us. Without me being the dead last to balance you two out, people were saying our team was stacked. Fortunately, he has an in with the Hokage. Since I was the first to come back, I'll go first, Kakashi announced. My name is Hatake Kakashi. I like masks, Jirai's books, and being late. I dislike it when someone uses one of the first two against me, especially if it's to make me show up somewhere on time. My dream for the future is to get you three past the tuning exams on your first try, as that hasn't happened since the Senin, and when I got back 14 years ago, I saved the life of my best friend Ujiha Obito, so I did not receive a Sharingan. Later on, my other teammate Rin also survived, and I let the Sangdame know that Minato Sensei was planning on sacrificing himself to seal the QB, so he decided to sacrifice himself instead. You killed the third? Sagara asked, horrified. Sasuke and Naruto exchanged smirks and held their hands out to Kakashi. Grumbling, the Jonin handed over some money. For the last time, I did not kill the third. He made his own choices and he should be remembered as a hero, not my victim. Oh, Kakashi! Naruto began. I can see your point of view. Really, I can. But seeing as how Sakura, Sasuke, and I all had the exact same reaction, I'd say you're outvoted. You killed the third. 
Kakashi looked like he wanted to strangle the blood, but managed to restrain himself. Since you were the second to return, why don't you go next, Naruto? All right, said Naruto agreeably. My name is Namikaze Naruto. Since my father's still alive and Hokage, I like ramen and having therapy due to be considered a legitimate shinobi too. And I dislike revenge and idiots who chase after it at the expense of everything else. My dream for the future is, of course, to be a Hokage and also to be able to help all of my old and future friends. When I came back, I impersonated Orochimaru and claimed credit for the Uchiha massacre in front of a large crowd of witnesses Kakashi had managed to round up. Causing Sasuke to become obsessed with revenge on the snake pedophile until he came back. So that's why Tachi's here? Sakura asked. And no one's running away panicked? Yep! Naruto confirmed. He and Sasuke live with Obito and his wife Rin, who Kakashi and Minato kept out of the loop as far as the whole massacre thing went. My name is Ujiha Sasuke. Sasuke went next. I like revenge, getting stronger, and tomatoes. I dislike sweet things, fangirls, and people who forget to tell me that Tsunade found a way to reverse the corrosive damage that Yanko causes with a relatively simple jutsu you perform within a few seconds of using it. And my dream is to get revenge on everyone I feel has wronged me in any way, including but not limited to Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Madara. To be fair, Kakashi said, we were concerned you would use it in front of someone when you're not even supposed to have it yet and we didn't want you to go off the rails seeking vengeance on insanely powerful shinobi before you'd even graduated. <clears throat> Our first mission outside of Kanaha Naruto is going to have a new death experience. I don't want to have to hide the Migenkyo now that there's really no downside to using it, Sasuke said flatly. As long as it's heroic, Naruto agreed. Maybe I can sacrifice myself to save you. That would put us both in a good light. No mention of Danzo or the cancel? Zakura asked, intrigued. Half of the reason you wanted to destroy Kanaha was because you wanted to kill them. Have you gotten over it? She asked, standing skeptical. Naruto snarled. Sasuke, get over something. That's funny. It wasn't finished, you know. Sasuke glared at Naruto. When I got back last year, I poisoned Danzo and the council and forged a suicide note from Danzo claiming he'd killed the council for the good of the village. Given that the new council, Nara, Shikaku, and Tsunade, aren't evil and being a council member forced Tsunade to stay in Kanaha and figure out how to deal with him in Genko Sharingan, I stand by Danzo's statement and you will never convince me otherwise. Danzo's statement! Naruto repeated, You ruled the nodes! Which might explain why I agree with it. Sasuke noted, I see. Sakura said, trying to assimilate all the information. Her teammates had certainly been busy. She couldn't wait until her memories returned so she could try and make sense of all of this. My name is Haruno Sakura. I like people who believe in and inspire others. And also dislike revenge-obsessed idiots who throw everything away in his pursuit. My dream is to become the best medic in Kanaha has ever seen and to never be left behind again. Since arriving this morning, I... Well, I got a haircut and plan on getting a more appropriate wardrobe for tomorrow. That's it, Sasuke asked incredulously. And Sakura's sheepish nod. He snorted. So even though you came back in time for the sole purpose of not being useless, when it came to making changes, you still ended up being pretty useless. I've only been back for a few hours! Give me a break! Sakura snapped. I saved Obito's life within an hour of being back, Kakashi told her. By the time I was back for as long as you were, I had ruined Orochimaru for the Uchiha massacre! Naruto added. By the time I was back for 20 minutes, I had wiped out three village elders, Sasuke pointed out. Sakura crossed her arms, annoyed. I really hate you guys sometimes, you know that? The next day, when Sakura stepped out of her house to head towards the training fields where the battle test was going to take place, she saw Naruto leaning against a tree. What are you doing here? She asked. I'm not! Naruto replied. Pardon? Sakura asked. I'm not here! I'm in Ishiraku's ramen stand! Naruto explained. Are you sure? Sakura asked. Because it looks like you're here. I'm a clone! Naruto explained. Or rather, his clone did. I figured Kakashi wouldn't show up anytime soon, so Sasuke and I decided to sneak his house out. Sure enough, he was planning on arriving six hours after we were supposed to meet, so we decided to go to Ichibaku's, and I figured if we just left you hanging for six hours, you'd probably kill us. Especially me. Oh yeah, I would. Sakura agreed. To Ichibaku's it is. Six hours later, the finally reunited Team 7 made their way back to their training grounds for their final exam. Of course, they knew Kakashi would pass them either way, and Naruto's dad, who was apparently still Hokage, was sure to be mad.
dead if his son was failed by his former student. But it would still be nice to get those bells for once, especially as Sakura was sure Kakashi had made sure to be completely up to date on Jiraiya's novels, so Naruto couldn't threaten to spoil them and get the bells that way like last time. You know the drill, Kakashi said, sounding bored. I have two bells, you need to get them before noon or you suck. He reached down to pat the bells attached to his belt, only to realize they weren't there. What the? Where are they? You mean these bells? Sagara asked innocently, holding up the two bells. How'd you get those? Kakashi demanded. I stole them during brunch, Sakura explained. The test hasn't started yet, Sakura, Kakashi reminded her. In the shinobi world, playing fair won't get you very far, Sakura countered. And I did get them before noon. And what's more, I'm going to give them to my teammates as I don't want them to fail. With that, she placed one in Naruto's hand and the other in Sasuke's. Gagashi groaned. You know, if you had just told us you had them at the restaurant, we wouldn't have had to come all the way out here. Fine, whatever, pass. I'm sure you're all shocked. How's that for useless? Sagara asked triumphantly.